artist from the planet. This one straight to a boy. Tell a friend to tell a friend. She's not going to stay. Left boy is straight to a friend. Are you people to tell a friend? Tell a friend to tell a friend. 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 Hi. <laughs> Bless. Can I say thank you for allowing us to interview you? Right. Please can you tell the Fire family a little about you, about how you come to be where you are now. Okay. Well, greetings, and um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, right. With regards to myself now. Um, 14 years of age, just loved the music. In fact, it started a little bit before that, but um, I've always loved reggae music and um, always saw myself wanting to do reggae music as well, but didn't start until I was 17 on the sound system. Um, local sound named Diamonds that I used to pluck up the courage and go and DJ on um, weekends and um, from there it's a thing of um, with the progression of the music it was being approached by an artist Dr. Anna Mantado um, he asked me if I wanted to do some music and um, obviously I just ran with it, I said yeah definitely. Um, we'd done an album and that was in 1987, I was 19 at that age, at that time and um, doing an album was like dreams come true because that's all I ever wanted to do was the music. Saw a lot of people in the business, um, at the time they were, there was sister Nancy obviously she started it but then there was other women DJs um, and I just said I want to do that I just like the expression and the freedom of expression because once you write I used to like doing poetry um, but that was always just in a book and never um, done anything else and then when I started to like the music I started to put the poetry to the music and it started from there then after that, doing the album, there wasn't much, um, there wasn't the, the album didn't go anywhere in the sense of um, me being involved with it. It was just taken and it was, it was, um, it was take, yeah, it was promote, it was somebody else's production basically, just my voice. Um, I didn't have anything to do with it. So, um, Woman DJ, um, Woman DJ by Sister Ruby on the Key Man label. Um, yeah, as I said, that was in 1987. I did go to Jamaica and um, used to chat on the sound systems and tried to make myself known there in the studios because um, it was a lot easier than here. Over here, yes, definitely. Well, being a foreigner, <laughs> it worked for me. And um, when I'm here, anything that happens, I don't know, cha, I'll just switch. Over there, you switch back to your English. So when they used to hear the accent and thing, it was like, come in. And people used to ask me to take them to the studios. I mean, I'm not going to mention names now, actually, but I could. I remember back in the day, it was um, before Trilla U did Bus, and he did have a good amount of songs there, but he wasn't like Bus Bus yet. And um, I remember he used to stand at Jamie's gates and say, come, come, bring me in now, bring me in. And that, you know, and I used to think, wow. And over here, they wouldn't give me the time of day. So um, I used to, be eager to go to Jamaica early where I could chat, I'd pick up the mic and chat and I was I was known over there more than here because after I'd done the album, other than just um, doing a few little appearances on the Diamond Sound System that I started off in, it didn't take me anywhere. It was just a promise of, you. Know, everybody wanted to do a song and um, do a record. And it was just one promise after the other, after the other. But you'd never hear yourself, never heard myself on the radio and things. So it was just getting um, to a point where I wasn't feeling it anymore. 
you know I still had the love of the music but for me to put myself on that platform I wasn't feeling it because um, to me it just didn't seem like the path I wanted to go down didn't seem clean it didn't seem right if you know what I mean because there was a lot of um, there was a lot of politics then pull it that way a lot of politics which I just wasn't aware of and didn't want to be a part of um, so I just removed myself had my children and that takes a big chunk of my life and um, yeah just always having music in on the back burner when I used to go to Jamaica because we used to take the kids to Jamaica and anything anytime I was in Jamaica I'd feel the vibe as soon as I got back I'd be on the plane and I could just feel it leaving me you know because it's just a whole total thing there was no motivation no encouragement to um, to pursue anything here so as I said I just left it but what's happened is when she was a little one like it was just the yearning inside of me saying you started this thing and you didn't finish it you know and um, I could just never put it away yeah. and um, I think to myself okay I'll do it one day I've got all my lyrics then put down and um, I'll, I'll just return one day and that I did um, it was 2017 I did do some recordings in 2016 that was just to um, it was to give myself that push that I needed to say start if you don't start you won't know so 2016 I um, recorded some music I went to Jamaica and worked with some uh, a drummer the drummer from the firehouse crew and he's a producer as well so it was his encouragement his name's George Miller and it was his encouragement that because otherwise I was just gonna do one or two and then just tick it and say right because you know you've got your little bucket list and it was just one of the many things that I wanted to do and complete and um, I went I done it done two songs and he did say to me aren't you gonna do any more and I thought said no no because I'm multi-talented, I'm going to go and do something else. I'm a balloon decorator, I'm a painter and decorator. I do anything to do with crafts, that's my thing. So um, I knew that I just wanted to do the music and then return to the many other things that I do. And he said, why don't you just do music? Because I think you've got something here. But I didn't really need the validation. I didn't want the validation. It was just something that I needed to do for myself. And um, but then I thought to myself, hold on, this man works with Scissor and he's telling me that I have something. I thought, well, maybe he might have something there. I didn't doubt myself to say that how I wasn't good enough, but I'd been out of this thing a long time. So the style, the delivery, everything's kind of changed. And here I am still stuck in 1980s, you know. So um, I thought maybe it wouldn't work. But then once I started, the spirit inside of me just woke up and yeah and it was like a thing to say you know me it was like a an abandoned child that I had just honestly that's how I well and, and it, you, you know I couldn't leave it and I just said to myself you know what this is what I've always wanted to do my children had my 100% attention focus throughout all that time and I said well this is and when it comes to my time this is what I'm going to be doing mm -hmm. so it was getting nearer and nearer and nearer to my time and um, I entered the competition and um, Britain's got reggae mm -hmm. and from I done that that's it this is the rest is history because not only did it give me the confidence it gave me the exposure then those who knew of me before would say, are you the same Sister Ruby from back in the day? And I said, yeah. They said, yeah, man, I used to listen to you. And that encouraged me because you never even knew if, if anybody was listening. You see what I mean? I've never had any feedback other than in the dance, blah, 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 and then that's it, you know? Um, so to know that I was even remembered from back in the day, I thought, oh, okay then, let me continue and I've just embarked on a route that 
I'm just looking straight ahead. There's no turning back. I keep on saying it, no turning back. Because I do have my time. Because I say to myself, I'm not fully out there yet. So if I wanted to retreat, it's, and I'm not because people don't know of, of me, really. Yeah. But then I said, that's not an option. No. That's not, I'm not, that, that's failure in my book. And, you know, we don't use them terminology there. So <laughs> I just said, um, okay, I'm going to continue. But I had to tell myself that I'm going to be the best that I can be. I'm not going to be, if it makes me the best, fine. I ain't telling myself I'm the best. I'm just going to be the best that I can be. And wherever that takes me, then, you know, just to God be the glory. Because I'm on a journey and I'm enjoying myself. That's the main thing. Yeah, I'm having so much fun. It's united our families away. I mean, we're a close-knit family anyway, but like when we used to have the competitions, meeting up on a Thursday night to go down at Ahu Anani, knowing that I've got my, my back of tears behind me. Oh gosh, I said, I've used it before the, the, this saying, but this is how I feel, literally invincible. Because I, they can't touch me when my family is around, you know? And the other night, it was just testimony to that feeling, you know? A, a, a spirit came over me. I have to say that, you know, sometimes I get away, you know what I mean? Because, <laughs> because when this feeling comes over me, I, I, you just have to go with it, you know? <coughs> and, um, yeah, and I just know that music is the way. I mean, music is, it, it resonates with who I really am. Because I I don't like um, don't like to be boxed in. I like that freedom. With music, I can say anything. It's just how you say it, you know. Because you can be nasty with music, and you don't have to say skin out to this and you know what I mean. But you can be very graphic. But it's how you put it. And when I say nasty, I don't mean it with that nasty intention. But you can be very explicit. Yeah. But it's how you put it across. And music you can get away with that you know you can you can cuss somebody diplomatically with music yeah. as well and still get away with it and they will tell you thank you as well you know <laughs> so music is a powerful thing um it, it's just it's controlled my life although i haven't really been in it but music has always been the force behind in everything that I do. <coughs> Vibes me up. The kids will tell you when I'm down, it's like, put some music and just blast it up. And as I said, it, I don't know whether people were thinking that I'm joking, but the time has come now that it's, um, I'm playing the music loud, bucking it loud. And the kids are saying, mom, do you know what time it is? Come on, turn down the music, man. <laughs> And I never knew that I would have been a witness to that. And it, that just makes me laugh. Because it makes me know so that how, what else can I do if I wasn't doing that? You know, I'm not, I know that I can do other things, but it doesn't touch me to my soul, not like how music does. So I'll be doing people's jobs and, oh, could, I've got an event, could you do this? And I love just to look back and see um, that I've decorated things. But I also like to see people jump and, I move and I, you know, have a nice time because of the utterance. And if I've got that ability and I've got that blessing, I'm going to use it to the fullest, you know, and, and get the rewards too because I'm looking something out of it. I know Chronic says do it for the love and not the likes, but me, I do it for the likes too. Because <laughs> the likes bring the money. Because if I just love it, love alone don't fool the belly, you know what I mean? So I'm being honest i'm actively seeking something out of it but if not i love it enough to do it anyway yeah. so you know yeah. but may i do it for the likes you said that you did an album mm -hmm. so that this album's got a compilation compilation of all of songs and stuff on it did you release them individually no, it was all done just as an album, um, one time, yeah, it was, no, he did take um, a couple of, I say he, Dr. Alan Mantado, he took a couple, no, one um, song 
took one song from the album and released it as a single but that's yeah so would that be your first release though? that would have been the first release and what yeah would that be woman dj from 1987 uh, life it is okay. tough as a woman dj listen this or that i can't tell me something for say what i say if you are a woman and you say you can dj you feel firm you feel chang you feel galang 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 ka. to be a dj you don't have to be a man yeah. all right yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you feel about your career choice? How did your family feel about your career choice? Oh gosh, I've always been the one who does things different. Um, and my family are with me no matter what. My mum and dad have, were exceptional people. My mum's still with us, my dad's not. And they were elder, like my dad would have been 96 now. And um, I always felt like I was grown by my grandfather, you know, with that discipline and, you know, the the values that they instill within you. But um, as old as they were, we kept them current. Yeah. And because my dad and my mum, well, I was a daddy's girl, you know, I'd never really clicked with my mum until later on. But with my dad's encouragement, um, he would have encouraged me to, to do anything that I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, he was that fair to say, all right, it might not be my thing, but I see that you have a love for this and from it's nothing bad. I'm not hurting anybody, you know? He's still up for and just, he said, go and do what you do. But he did used to say to me, you love this Bugal Yaga business. <laughs> Why are you on a sing? Why are you on a sing? And I used to say, all right, I'm going to sing, but I like the DJing. And little by little, I have kind of like filtered the singing in. That's why I call myself a sing J now, because I actually enjoy singing. It's just that I feel I'm a better DJ, that's why. But I am focusing more on the singing, <coughs> excuse me, just for, um, just for the um, versatility of it, you know, and maybe if I improve on my singing more, because I want to take singing lessons and things, get myself to the level of where I'm happy. And then I probably take on more singing songs and that, you know, so, um, yeah. <clears throat> what were your influences during your journey? Uh, what were my influences, um, what has artists influenced in me? Yeah. Uh, I've said this many times and I can't leave them out. UB40 was my first influence. I just loved UB40. And um, that was from about the age of 11 with their I think. So that kind of like opened my eyes. Because we were listening to reggae music, you know. But it was reggae music that my sister, my elder sisters would listen to. My mum and dad, they weren't into music as such. Now and again, once a year, they might take out Jim Reeves and the this, the that, but they weren't music people. My elder sisters were, but their kind of music at the time, I didn't appreciate at that time. So it wasn't until UB40 come, doing all these covers and things like that. They didn't start with covers actually, but it kind of like opened up my ears and I, kind of got more into reggae and then Sister Nancy, I remember the first trip to Jamaica, Sister Nancy had a, um, a transport connection song tune thing and that inspired me a lot because I used to say every corner we go and you to hear, you to hear this woman doing this and I kind of like tuned in and the more I found out about her, um, Sister Nancy that is, um, I just wanted to do what she was doing, DJing. And I had a very close brethren at the time who used to get sound tapes. I don't know if you remember the times when we used to get the cassettes. Yeah. Okay, we're showing our age here. <laughs> but um, we used to get the cassettes every week and they'll say, oh, we have a new song, Tia Pan, blah, blah, blah. So I was just being exposed to all the um, dance hall. And um, yeah, it just seemed like a natural progression because I used to sit with my brethren, write lyrics. As I said, I was into poetry and that. And then when I saw that it was easy to kind of like just jump on the rhythm, I thought, yeah, I could do some of this. And he always encouraged me. 
He says, Sai Ruby, you had the best, you know. You had the best. Just go out there. <laughs> oh, gosh. I can see him now, but... Oh, my... Oh, I don't know. That's what he used to say to me, and I always remembered him. So, and I used to think to myself, he was a man that um, everybody... Like, if, if you didn't love him, you hate him. You see what I mean? He had big... Yeah. He had... Um, uh, a lot of influence in the area and he took hold of me and my sister like two little sisters mm -hmm. and because we used to trod with him people kind of used to look on us away they wouldn't know that we were just little sheep following yeah. you know we he kind of like was training us for some army like we was going on the battlefield you know and being a DJ was part of that you know just stand up there screw face do your thing go about your business and mash up the place and you know so but unfortunately he passed when i was what just like 21 just done the album not too long and i had a couple of years like reeling uh, in the delight of things saying yeah i'm gonna do this thing musically and then when he passed i think that's when the vibe went as well because i didn't have that militant figure side of me to go and beat down the barriers that we had to yeah and then left to my own device it was just like the mother instinct coming out I said no I want my kids I want my family and you know and I was blessed with five beautiful children I've had five lovely children there. and um, it was just time to go back to what Do I you the and if so how does it affect your words? I don't believe I know of the presence of the Most High, um, but I also know, say, my concept probably is different to many people who I talk to and I reason. But I know, say, that the God is within. You see what I mean? And um, that's why I like my reverence. I'm not a person. I'm a sociable person, but I like my solitude. You see what I mean? Because my solitude is my time where I would say is when I meditate, that's my God time. Yeah. You see what I mean? And I know that so I've got to go to that place in order to bring out what's in me. And it's evident in my music. It's um, a true reflection of who I am. I couldn't... I mean, it, writing lyrics, I, I'm not one of these artists. All right, let me tell you now. I've always said this and I'm going to stay true to my word. I'm not a Rasta woman who's going to come in and just talk about burn down the fire and burn down Babylon and blah, 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 blah. No. Should I tell you why? No, because I, I've got my bonfire lyrics, yes, and chant them down. I have that. But I just feel so that there's so many other areas that we can depict and highlight for our good. Chanting them down and saying, you know, I, to me, I want to come away from that um, old style. I, I want to use the right words. I want to think of what I'm saying because I don't want it to sound like what when you've got somebody burning the fire red, you know, that is good. We need that. But I didn't want to take that route. Yeah. simply because we have others doing it already and as I said as a woman I'm a very sensitive person I'm a very intuitive person and I know that there's issues out there that we can touch upon and through the music through the power of music I know that we could um, create an effective change right in a way that we can do it in harmony instead of this aggression you see what I mean? I'm all about love. And I know say sometimes it's we've got it's hard love sometimes we have to deal with. But for me to um, be on that vibe of just burning, 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 I have to go to that place of what I'm fighting against. And I don't want that to be prevalent in my music at all times. I know I've got a lot of music where when I do touch back, when I say, do you care to remember? because that's a song on one of my, um, on that album that I've done with um, Alan Mantado. When I said, do you care to remember? When I wrote that song, I had to try and put myself in a, in a vibe as if I really was a slave. 
and I tried to imagine what it really was being a slave and the emotion that it brought up. I mean, I cried, I wept like a baby just to try and feel that emotion so that I could get it across. But I didn't want to go there because I could smell things, I could feel things, my goosebump was all over me and I just thought to myself, I don't want to go there again. You see what I mean? But we have to face things. And yes, going back to your question, the Most High is very much the source of where I come from. Very much so. Sorry? Yes, yes. Because I know said that how the destination, if I if I leave out the consciousness of what I would say is um, keeping me on a level, because it's only my consciousness, because without us acknowledging the Almighty, it's as if there is no Almighty, but still the Almighty is there. You see what I mean? So it, it, it arouses our consciousness to acknowledge Him, but I just know it. the source of me, the, from here, from the God, that's where the Divine is. And that's where I do everything from. So very much, I, I know that there's the Almighty God. I'm not a believer. I'm not a believer. Uh, yes, I'm coming from a place of knowing. Yeah. Would you mind sharing the current struggles you think a recording artist may face? Um, I just think now, I, in a way, it's a lot easier because um, I back in the day when you used to have to go to a producer and if he didn't want to help you, it's like there wasn't many avenues. Now, everybody's got their little thing. They can box up a rhythm, whether it's good or not, and put it out there. You see what I mean? So in that respect, it's got easier. The quality of music, I don't feel because it's done that way, it's so easily accessible now. The quality has gone down, all right? Quality has gone down, but I don't think, if I even just cast my mind back to how, when I was entering into the music, there was a body, there was a force. Even if it was a bit one-sided, there was that body. There is nothing like that now. Everybody, yeah, that one bud, that one bud, this one, that, you know? And um, it's many people, I just feel like we're just in a, in a whirlwind, running around. And I don't think that there's no central body over here that we could go to. At one time, you used to go to Greensleeves, um, Mr. Palmer, Jet Star for distribution and things. And as I said, although it wasn't very... Um, many people and it was a bit one-sided that was how it was and i think it was in a better position we used to have reggae charts we used to have um there was unity i used to see this is what made me want to um be a part of the music industry because when you used to go out on a saturday you'd see the unity of the sound men yeah. right um you'll see from the box man to, to, to the last person who take the mic. Everybody has to come together to make that work. And I don't see that unity there now because the sound system business has kind of died out. The creativity that you used to have, if you know, say, a wicked dance at the weekend, and you know so that you want to go and chat to lyrics, you know, all week, you're going to have your mind ticking, right? You're not going to be on your phone and this and that and idling. You're going to have um, you're going to have a, a topic and you're going to want to put it across the best way that you can. So that creativity has gone and um, for a woman in the business, back in the day I used to say it was hard, but I think in a way it's even harder now to get up there, you know, not to get in, but to get up there because anybody will call you in now and as, as I said, there's, so everybody's um, doing music now, tap, tap, tap in their yard or whatever. And, um, but how many women out there are, I cannot put it. I mean, you've got the foundation ones, 
right? Foundation singers. I'm English artists that I'm talking about, and they're here, and it's a joy to see. I see Frederica Tibbs, I see Winsome, right? And I say Frederica because I remember dancing to her songs, you know? And now she's like harmonizing with me, and to me, I'm thinking, wow! <laughs> what an achievement, you know what I mean? And look how things come around, turn from me dancing, rubbing off the wallpaper to her songs to she's backing me now, you know what I mean? I'm sorry to say that. I'll see your eyebrows running. <laughs> sorry. But um, yeah, so I don't think um, we can get in as women, but I don't really see any prominent women out there. And um, they say it's a man's world, but 2020, watch, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a big turnaround. How do you think your struggle is different from a man? Well, to be honest, man, yeah. Right, a man is gonna have a brethren. He's gonna have another brethren, and they're all gonna link up, and it's gonna be cool. With a woman, most of the time, nine times out of ten. A man's only interested if he's interested in you. Yeah. And that's the sad reality. Yeah. And the minute he's not interested in you, you ain't getting no help. It's as if you hadn't even started. Yeah. So, that's a big thing, because there ain't no woman producers out there that a man is going to be violated by. No. You see what I mean? But it has happened the other way around. Yeah. But, um, I haven't struggled, and I'm not going to pretend that I've struggled. Um, it hasn't been an open door for me and say, yeah, come in. But because um, from the beginning, then I put it down, from the return and going through the platform of Britain's Got Reggae and thing, um, it's been plain sailing, really, because of the way I've come. I haven't, I came through the competition first. Then after the competition, through that exposure, people were coming to me and said, oh, I saw you on Britain's Got Reggae. Um, I've done some recordings with Gary Digitech, who's um, a prominent um, producer. Everybody records with Digitech, you know? And then through linking up with him and Serling from Britain's Got Reggae, everything has happened from there. So I can't say that I struggled, because don't forget, when I'm talking about back in the day, I never even had my foot in the door. I'd done a recording, yes, but what does that mean? Yeah. You know, it, it, and the thing is, I did see um, in, like, years after, that I remember when I, MySpace used to be on. Yeah. And um, I saw my album selling, and I'm thinking, what? My album's still selling, and like, I don't want to go too much into that, but then that's what made me say to myself, one day, one day, God, watch it. One day, one day, I am going to come and it is going to be, I'm going to render all that invalid. That's how the, that was the feeling I had to try and spur me back on. But I don't want that to be invalid. That's my works. You know what I mean? And I can still, my name is on that. Like if you go on the YouTube, you will see a much younger Ruby, but hey, that's me. So I don't want to discard it just because of a bad experience. Yeah. And, and I'm proud of my works, and I think I might even revamp some of the works too, and just make it more current, up to date, and um, just keep, keep the vibes going, because that's my work, and I haven't taken lyrics from anybody. There's no um, technicalities as to why I can't do it. So I think that's what I'll do because, um, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to just do music until I drop, <laughs> basically. <coughs> if you could give advice to an aspiring artist, what would it be? Keep on. Don't let nobody tell you anything. The harder the fight is going to be the sweeter the victory. Um, it sounds a bit cliche, but it is true because I've seen people struggle and we're, I probably would have given up long ago I can see them now and it's it's glory time. So um, that is what I would say. Um, even though I feel like I did give up, I didn't give up. It was just me putting it on pause, a long pause, until I'd done what I had to do and then 
I've just lick off the pause button now and we're rolling. <laughs> rolling. What artists do you listen to? All of them. All of them. I don't have a favourite artist. No, I mean like do you listen across genres? Oh, okay. I'm a bit biased. I like my reggae, that's it. It's the heartbeat. It totally resonates with me, it really does. And um, but I do like R and B. I do like good music. So if I hear something and I like it, I go on with it. I just like it. You know. That's why I don't have a favorite artist because I just take things as they are. I like good music. If I have a favorite artist and I don't like a couple of the songs, I'm not gonna like it because you're my artist. Is a bad song is just a bad song. Go back and come again. You see what I mean? So it's regardless of who that is. And um, yeah, but um, I do, I do, I appreciate good music. Um, I do, other than reggae, I've got a liking for R&B. Um, yeah, other than that, it's as and when I hear it. Yeah, because I listen to Capital and I'll say, oh, who's that? You know? But it's not really my thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you been surprised at response from from them from your music lovers? I have. I really have, and that's why I said that I can't just mess about with it because um, it's as if you're playing with people's emotions as well. Because um, I could never have thought. I could never have imagined that I would have got the response that I have got to the, thus far. So I know that with how the vision that I see for myself and if that manifests, when it manifests, it's greater than what it is now. And if the people are with me now, they're gonna have a blast further down the road, you know? Because it's just something I've got to tell myself so that I can keep on improving. Yeah. I don't ever want to get complacent and think, yeah, I've, I've done, I love where I'm at now, but it's still very early days. Yeah. But the, the, the love and the appreciation has been overwhelming. It really has. And um, it cemented more in me that you can't let the people them down. Yeah. And most of all, I can't let myself down. Because as much as they may want to hear me, I've still got to tick that box. I see the vision and I know what I'm expecting of myself. I'm not putting pressure on myself, but I just know what that end that end picture is. And I ain't nowhere near there yet. I've got to start touring and I've got to start going around the place. And when people say Ruby, you're supposed to say, Sister Ruby, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, everybody's supposed to hear about me. <laughs> And that's not being egotistic. I just think that how I've been patient enough and I think that if I do the work and do it diligently and um, in a way that I'm willing to do it, I'm, I'll put my all into it. So my all is gonna, is gonna reward me with something that I'm gonna be proud of. So that's why I know so that when I say Ruby, sister Ruby, everybody's supposed to say, yeah, I've heard of her. Whether they like me or not is a different thing, but you've got to hear about me. Yeah. Yeah. What have you got in the pipeline? I can't say. I can't say. When I say that, I mean like, I've got, it's just gonna be more music. Music on top of music on top of music. But as I said, and I won't say anything more because I don't wanna like cramp it or whatever. I'm on a touring vibe. Yeah. And that, that's the next level for me. Yeah. Because the studio, I think I felt so comfy in the studio. And I think because of that, com that comfort, it didn't take me out on the road. Yeah. Because don't forget, I can put out a song and you don't know what I look like. It's just the voice. But now I've put myself on the next level and um, I'm now visible. Well, let me be visible in the right way, you know? and. Um, I'd rather people sick of me than don't see me. Exactly. You know? So that's where it is, to be honest. I can't say nothing more. I just know so that I've, I've reasoned with the Almighty, you know. When I when I meditate and I felt that that shift in my stomach, 
once I is who feels it knows it so is that I'm working with you know so I know said that how um, if I get halfway of the vision I'll do good even if I don't get halfway it's just that I want to get there because I've I've seen it I felt it yeah 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 <laughs> How can a Shiro family keep in contact with you? Well, you contacted me on the social media yeah. and that's how most people get in contact with me. And sorry? Are you on Facebook? Right? Yes, I'm on Facebook, Sister Ruby, Instagram, Sister Ruby UK. I, I'm on Twitter but I don't I don't understand Twitter so I don't follow it yeah. as such. But I'm on it. Um, maybe I'll have to just learn about that or if anybody wants to contact me on Twitter and get the Twitter active you know but um, yeah just the social media platforms and then um, when you if you really get close we've got a telepathy going on <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> yeah then we'll connect them ways then please feel free to make a shout out to your well wishes Wow, anybody who wishes me well, genuinely wishes me well, just not in my face and then behind my back try to say, how can we stop her? And I know that that is going to be happening, you know, because the show we done the other night, right? I done a, a show with, um, it was an artist. Say the show the other night, where were we? That's what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go in depth now. Rally Genius, he was another contestant in Britain's Got Reggae, right? And um, we just connected, we clicked. The minute we met, we it was supposed to be a competition against each other, but we never competed against each other. And um, from that connection, we have worked with each other ever since. I've had a headline show and I invited him. Well, he had his show the other night and he invited myself along with the other people that um, I mentioned and it was, I, I'm telling you, it was amazing. It was a lovely show and I surprised myself. Surprised myself in the way of, of um, not that I didn't think that I could, I went there to mash up the place and that I did, but the surprise was the feeling, the, the whole the whole way it unfolded and, and that that's why I say it was a surprise because I actually they say you shouldn't say when you do things wrong but I'm not a, if I can talk of the right I can talk of the wrong but it's out of the wrong I got the teaching because something happened on stage that I know it won't happen again not that way because I've learned that lesson to me that was the greatest thing about um, Thursday night but the sweetest thing now was that I mash up the place, turn it upside down, simply because I had a new song and it never done it in public before. And the anticipation in me, like to see how are they gonna receive it and think it was a joy because it was received well. And if it wasn't received well, I got my learning to go home and tweak it. You see what I mean? But the fact that it was, that nervousness, everything just went from me because it was well received and appreciated by the people and I loved it because it was um, things, I, I like writing reality, um, conscious lyrics and that, but I never ever had any dance hall songs. So I said, what if I was to go into a dance hall now? Not everybody's deep and this is the truth of it. Sometimes they're going to say, oh, well, she's coming with her, her deep thing, you know? A conscious thing and I'm aware of that and because I've got young children as well they keep me current and let me know and if I do something and they say hey mum what are you doing I'll follow that up because I've got their attention and if I can get their attention as the younger youths then I'm doing something because then I can I can play about with it but I know the essence of it is gonna be something that they can sit down and say like I got a song called Baby Father. Oh dear, when we finish, I've got a CD for you. I've left oh, it in the car. Um, I've got a track called Baby Father, and any yeah, please. Anybody that um, any young person that hears it, they'll listen to the tracks and they'll say, Oh, what's this? What's this one called? So I know it taps in with them, you know. So anything like that, 
where I know so that I can um, write lyrics and um, make the people they might not as I said I don't want to go on as if I don't care whether they like it or not but I know how music is you might not like it the first time because to be honest and I'm gonna be blatantly honest and this is all I, I honesty is my thing it's to my downfall sometimes but hey when I first heard um, Toast, I didn't like it. Yeah. It took a while for it to really get onto me. Ragamuffin was my tune. Yeah. You see what I mean? I love that. And I so respect this because, um, but I look on her like she's my, uh, one of mine, a little daughter of mine. And I don't know her, but you know, the business, she's my little child, yeah. you know? And Toast did not resonate first. But now, to us, every minute, whether I want to think, and uh, so as my granddaughter, everybody's coming with it. So it finally sunk in, yeah. and uh, I love it. So hopefully, if you don't like my music first time, you might have to listen to it a couple of times. And sometimes, because of what I'm saying is truthful, sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. So they say they would shun it. No, 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 I'm not into that. I'm not into that. But then sit down in their in their reverence now, in their solitude, they can sit down and say, do you know what, I actually quite like this. And I've actually had people say, yeah, you know that love song that I said I didn't like? Yeah, I love it. Because what happens is now, they're saying, but you were coming deep, what are you coming with a love song for? I said, because I'm a human being and I have emotions. And just like, I'm not, as I say, I'm not gonna be there, who should we do, we do, and I love you, I can't live without you, no. But, at the same time, I have feelings and I put them down. But it wasn't even a song about me anyway, it was, it was my sister that I was interpreting her feelings and, and things. But it came out as a love song. And if I dig deep, there's plenty love songs in there. So don't be surprised if you hear me with a, a love song. But it's what kind of love song? You see what I mean? So, um, yeah, I want to touch all areas. I've got um, a few songs about drugs affecting life. I've got, I don't know if you know my song, um, Domestic Violence. I do. <coughs> okay. So those are topics that I want to touch. Yeah. Things that are real and affect everybody regardless of your denomination. Yeah, I want to be a realist and be true to the life we're living now and not an idealism that we think we should be living in this world. The reality is this, what we're living. Strive towards better and make your actions actually create the path so that we can get better. But in the ideal world, everybody wants good. Yeah. But the reality is there's wickedness and the calamity, the corruption that's going on. You've got to be strong yeah. to resist it. Otherwise, you just follow along with it. And yeah, I'm not into that. I certainly, I am, um, because of the ways, and I believe, um, I know people's spirits rub off on you and can determine and influence what you do. I'm very much a person who keeps myself to myself. That's why I, my, fr my friends are my, my kids, my family. My sister is my best friend, you know? I don't really go out of my circle because that's just for my own preservation, you know? Because I've seen how how things I know how people can affect me and I don't want them to have that edge on me no way I'm a strong person but I'm strong because I've kept it at bay I don't know how I would deal with things if I invite people in and because I'm a um, I'm an empath you know what I mean if you're sad I'm gonna be sad and and I don't want somebody else's vibe to to determine how I'm gonna be so really I just love my um, my close-knit circle but I know for the sake of music I'm gonna branch out as I said I am a sociable person but the essence of me you'll see me in the corner and I, I'm the observer you know and then when I feel you I'll come to you you know that that's me 
And I, I know sometimes I've been kind of like termed as, yeah, she's the funny one. And I don't even mind that because that making us a mean a regular. You know what I mean? A common foul, you know, you know, you know that. So I, sorry, I just changed that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I know. Said so that um, I'm, I'm just because I know what I know of myself. I just protect myself and keep that ones to my select crew, as I said. But um, I am not antisocial. And I'm not a funny one, I'm not weird or anything like that. I'm just me, unique, in all of my glory. Yeah. <laughs> it's been an amazing honour to interview you. On behalf of Fire Red Station and the Fire Red family, we'd like to thank you. Bless. Fire Red Station. Teach them Fire Red all to love you. Wow, 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 wow. Teach them Fire Red. Off a play tune, wow, 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 wow. Teach them off a play tune just like you, wow, 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 wow. Take a redeem and bust it in a them skin, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yes, fire red, fire red. Lovely interview, love it. <laughs>